Okay, so I'm just gonna show you one more time how to actually load the brush. So I'm going to double dip. I'm gonna try and get one color just from about here to here on the brush and then the second color just on the tip. So for me, the easiest way I've found is to actually take the color and roll my brush just at the edge of my puddle of color, dab it off and then dip, hold my brush vertical and roll it around in the second color. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of a weaving kind of viney flower. And remember, we prefer to have odd numbers of flowers on our, um, in our composition. So here we go. Double dipping, rolling around. Okay, there's one. And tilt it again. I'm gonna race around. While it's doing that, I'm just gonna clean my brush off and do another one. So I think I'm gonna have sort of one up in the corner, weave it down and then, so probably maybe one there, one there, probably five all together. So you can do a combination of single dipping or double dipping. So I'll do a single dipping here. So exactly the same process, roll, twirl, go around and around and around. And you'll find as you practice this, it become, the motion becomes more fluid and yet each one turns out quite unique. Okay, there's my single dipping. I think what I might actually do is just dab in a little bit of extra color. Clean my brush up again to try another one. This one I'll double dip. So I'll double dip pink and blue again. So any color combination works. Pink and yellow works really well. So I'll put one down here. And again, if you would like bright colors, then just use less water when you're mixing up your color. Whoops, that's an interesting shape. There we go. There's another one. And that is nice. And I think I'll just dab in a little bit of extra. Clean my brush off. Here comes another one. Try one here. And you can see that one's the intensity of that color is quite a bit stronger than the one that I just completed. And clean my brush off. Another one. So there's one, two, three, four. Not sure. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go five or seven. So what I'm doing is in my head, I'm just kind of imagining one, two, three, four, maybe another one here, and I'll probably leave it at that. What I'm going to do now is just clean my brush off really, really well. And I've already made up a green. So that's just my yellow and my blue. And I'm just going to connect the two flowers now, just kind of weave a vine. So I'm going to hold my brush really vertical. And you can see I'm quite pretty much at 90 degrees. Really light pressure. And try and make them wander a little bit. They don't have to be a complete straight line. So you could actually connect like that one to that one. And if that happens, you can see that that was still wet. And we know that wherever there is um, wet paint and you're touching two colors together, they will mix. So that, I'm just gonna strengthen that color just a tiny bit. And I think actually what I might do is have that one come off. And I'll do another one off this way. So it's very light pressure, just a little bit of curvy line but still leaving quite a bit of white space. And now what I'll do is come in and do some leaves. So load your brush, nice gentle stroke, lay the bristle all the way down on the paper and back off and curl. Lay the bristles down, back off on the pressure. So I haven't given it a whole lot of thought where I'm going to put my leaves. I'm just working really intuitively. Let me try that one again. There we go. So one, two, three, four. And that one feels like there's gonna be a leaf there already. So holding my brush vertical, lay your bristles on the paper and then back off on the pressure. And that one feels like it needs another one. And while everything is shiny wet, you can definitely come in if you want to change the greens here and there. So you can come in and add like little bits of yellow, little bits of blue. 
feels like it needs to go a little bit stronger. That one too. There we go. Now the last thing is, if you would like, you can fill the center of the flower. So that one, just take most of the moisture out of your brush, get a little bit of whatever color you would like for the center of the flower. Hold your brush vertical, and you're just doing little polka dots. So you don't have to fill the whole thing with polka dots. And you don't even have to do this if you don't want to. It's up to you to decide if you'd like. If your flower feels like it needs a little bit of something extra, put it in. If you like the way it looks without, then don't put anything in. And at this point, what I would do is actually hold the painting up and stand, you know, a couple meters away and just have a look at it and make sure that I like the composition, that there's nothing that I'd like to change. And when I'm looking at it, I can see that that is probably going to be too dark. So I'm just going to feed that color and just sort of drag it away. But there's my round the clock flowers. And you can see this actually can go pretty much any which way. There you go.